Hello, this is Matt Bailey-Smith and uh, Katie Jenkins and we're uh, here to just offer some sort of additional reflections on our paper existing at the interface. Um, I wanted to start really just thinking about where our paper came from and and I suppose a sense that we started trying to capture something that we felt was missing from accounts of development NGOs and missing from accounts of activism and it was a sense of, of kind of actors whose practices and politics have not not been addressed in any detail and part of that came from uh, from a really personal perspective that I used to work for development NGO and then I've had various kind of contacts and really kind of positive friendships and relationships with development activists particularly in South India who work for NGOs that kind of exist at a kind of scale and an infrastructure in a way of a way almost of being that that isn't that isn't captured by um, a lot of the contemporary scholarship and they were organizations that at one level are not the kind of grassroots organizations that Katie's looked at in her other research in Peru but they're also not the kind of growing national development NGOs that you see, see organizations like BRAC for example and they're not big international development NGOs so they're kind of I suppose organizations that, that are kind of existing in, in between stuff which is where we came up with this idea of kind of existing at the interface but but not just not you know not just the existing isn't just about them just being there it's about kind of the the, the daily struggle the kind of daily life of organizations and what it means for individuals who are kind of working between all these really complex global civic spaces and national kind of civic spaces and state politics but also kind of grassroots community organizing so the paper comes from the sense that there's a sort of there's some kind of invisible actors or actors whose whose practices and politics have been missing in in recent accounts and and for us they're a kind of a group we really really wanted to try and capture and this was really our first attempt to to kind of engage with these kinds of organizations but i suppose one of the problems is that and casey's going to talk about this that that it presents a whole set of methodological issues because we're working in between a whole set of things where there are a set of established methodological ideas and we were trying to occupy and and engage in and, 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 and be in, in these kind of different spaces and I think to some extent in our paper we learned a whole bunch of stuff that suggests we weren't necessarily that good at being in those spaces. Mm. Does, does that make sense? So one of the things when we were trying to think about how to actually capture some of these narratives and um, stories and patterns of, of existing in this space we thought about using the life history approach as a productive way of trying to capture voices of, of people who've traditionally been um, excluded from from these sort of, this sort of research. Um, so we initially thought of life histories as something that were very much a kind of emancipatory and transformative yeah. sort of um, methodology that would be empowering f for individuals. That was a kind of starting point. But as we started actually carrying out the research, we started to find that perhaps, as you might expect, it wasn't as straightforward as that and we particularly found that um, people, what we struggled to get was people's personal histories and their personal narratives of working in these different spaces, working between these different spaces and instead what we were getting was very much an organisational mm -hmm. narrative which was something that we'd hoped to get away from in kind of developing a less institutionalised account of, of what was happening both sort of in local spaces and also mm. when these actors were, were interacting in, in other places. So we found a real kind of difficulty in starting to disentangle the individual from the collective and the histories and the narratives that we were hearing about. And that started to make us think really about both kind of the assumptions that we brought to the research um, and also our own kind of positioning and having to situate ourselves in the research very much more and thinking about where we'd come from and our own kind of backgrounds and also our solidarities with the activists we were working with and how perhaps that had informed the methods that we hoped to use and sort of starting to think through some of the, the problematics that came through and perhaps having assumed a very individualised um, approach to activism when actually the people we were talking to had a very much more collective narrative that was embedded in a whole series of kind of activist history stretching back really to the kind of 1960s. So that was a kind of significant challenge yeah. that we came across. And, it, and it, it's kind of sparks off all these other thoughts we're having, try, we're trying to develop now about, you know, that we were, were trying to kind of use some of those ideas of a kind of subaltern cosmopolitanism to capture these kind of different forms of politics and different forms of cosmopolitan practice but actually, because we were sort of 
trying to negotiate around kind of subjectivity in the very process of doing the research that that meant who we are and and how we fitted into it we almost hadn't thought we kind of did think it through but it I produced a whole set of other kind of political encounters and political possibilities in our own our own way of being in that setting that, that at one level we've been I think we've tried to be really open and quite critical and candid about actually maybe we didn't get some of that quite right but but what we've done as a result is then to try and go on to write a different kind of paper which says well what kind of cosmopolitan politics might arise out of the research process and and how do the kind of encounters that we're having with individual activists who are negotiating these different political spaces you know we've kind of got to write ourselves back into that and and, and that's been quite an exciting thing but it's also really really it's quite a vulnerable making thing to do isn't it because it's almost a tacit acknowledgement that you know there might have been some challenges we we've only really learned as we've written up from the first stage of research but I do feel that um, in a way that's given us something really positive to go on to think about and I, I, I think the other area that we've started to really think about it and it, it came up in research but it is particularly relevant to this debate around subjectivity is that that we need to reposition and, and, and really start thinking through how these organisations as they're encountering us are negotiating a really particular moment and they're uh, negotiating this particular moment in kind of shifting geopolitics the idea of the kind of rising powers the shifting modalities of aid and we talk a little bit in the paper about how funding models have changed in the context of Tamil Nadu state development but that actually we've now got a really in, they've, you know these organizations are now facing unbelievable struggles these ones who are not the kind of grassroots organizations were celebrated they're not the elite NGOs they're not the big national NGOs these small organizations who work closely with particular communities are no longer supported and funded in any way and there are these different kind of ideas of solidarity where does this kind of solidarity they're looking for fit how does it resonate with an increasingly kind of marketized global civic apparatus you know forged around things like make poverty history and all, all, all those kinds of things so so at one level there's this kind of different geopolitical space that these organizations are trying to trying to shape and occupy and negotiate but I think the other side to it is this thing that that Katie and I've been trying to trying to think around more recently about where we go with our search next and that's that we've identified this space and this gap in kind of development politics and scholarship in, in the global south or certainly as we felt there's a kind of space and a, a kind of a mission in there but actually if we're a bit honest there is also a significant gap in our understanding of how development NGOs occupy particular spaces in the global north and how they work across those particular spaces and and if you look at the literature on development there is work on on the big development NGOs and and some ethnographic work and and how they function and, and operate in the global north we don't really have a detailed kind of critical um, and kind of political understanding of some of those organizations below that level do we we don't we're not we haven't got an accurate understanding of these very small often quite sort of personalized development organizations or charities that, that operate in the global north in, in, in lots of different countries I'm not saying it's a peculiarly British thing that are forged out of really particular personal trajectories and really uh, very kind of personal connections people make and they come back and say I want to form an organization and and then they start engaging in these transnational relationships and forming these bonds but those organizations are also kind of written out there's, there's accounts of them in the, in the sense of the kind of histories of the solidarity movements and that I suppose that connect in with that but I think increasingly if you look at this kind of you know Cameron's idea of muscular liberalism and a kind of neoliberalized setting in the UK that if aid and development and those sorts of transactions are becoming increasingly privatized and commodified then we also need to be understanding some of these kind of comparable in a way uh, small intermediate middle level development NGOs only in in Britain and how, what kind of forms a connection and one of the arguments we were thinking about recently was the relationship with discourses around professionalization which obviously talk about um, in this paper we've spoken about other things in case the Katie's work don't we that how are these organizations professional organizations are they are they are they deprofessionalizing are they offering a different kind of legitimacy and I suppose it just raises a whole set of further issues about the politics of solidarity and global civic engagement that is completely missing from our understanding of a kind of transnational development politics and the kind of actually existing cosmopolitanisms but I think that also was something that came out of our encounter with the activists wasn't it that it really almost exemplified the fact that what they wanted that personal connection yeah. they almost saw us as a kind of 
uh, the signifier of the sort of thing they're looking for that isn't about that financial relationship. Yeah. It's about a more personal, enduring yeah. relationship over over time. Yeah. And that was something that a lot of the activists kind of flagged yeah. up as important. That's one of the things that we're hoping to kind of develop yeah, further, yeah. isn't it? This sort of a kind of a reaction to the professionalisation of development yes. is the looking for these much more personal connections, which we almost represented, I think, for them yeah, in that moment right. of the, the kind of space of the interview yeah. was something that they really wanted to... Yeah, and I think that the interaction, we got the sense that the interactions, I mean, obviously the interactions are incredibly positive and, and, and interesting and enjoyable for us, but almost a sense that, you know, actually those kinds of interactions where we were not in the context mm -hmm. of of a kind of donor relationship and those kind of conversations are really important obviously this connects to a whole set of existing debates around what civil society is made of and the roles of conversation and, and all that sort of thing and it, I think Katie's right there is this sense of the personal being really important and in a way I suppose the way I see our research I don't know if you agree with this but the way I see what we're trying to do is kind of challenging some of the kind of spatializing and instrumentalizing of, of development at two levels so we're we're trying to step beyond those kind of focus on the kind of donor relationships and so on and try and think about what some of the political possibilities are outside that and the personal mm -hmm. is, is clearly one of them and in a sense we both have kind of our own kind of personal takes and feelings about it from engaging in it but the other side is kind of kind of challenging the spatializing of development and saying well you know these little small northern development NGOs are often kind of written off as being well they're just charities or you know it, it's it's, it's not just one part. person yeah or, yeah mm. absolutely and yet and yet actually they're increasingly significant and they hold some important political possibilities we're not, uh, I don't think we're saying they are the answer mm. but there, there's a kind of politics there's a personal politics going on here that that I think we have an inadequate understanding of and yet which is actually pivotal to, to the kind of the development more kind of radical uh, kind of transnational political connections maybe radical is the wrong word but more um, very kind of powerful and transformative ones mm. and, that, and that we perhaps need to kind of try and have a better understanding of it I think that's all we want to add for now uh, but to say, I, hope, I hope we've given a picture of where we're going with our research some of the ideas we're playing around with we'd really welcome people getting in touch with us to talk more yeah. about these things we've, as you can tell we've got lots of ideas we're trying to play around with lots of different actors and methodologies and so on so so please, please do get in contact with us. We're both at Northumbria University. Um, our email's on the website for um, the article. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Thanks.